Everybody welcome back. I'm Yumble, and this one is all about biking in a roundabout. Not my usual fare, I know, but I've seen it done well, not so much in city skylines generally, but I've seen it done very well by the by the Dutch. I think Denmark would have something to say about it as well. Um, there are there are several places on the planet that do rely heavily on bikeable roundabouts, touting the safety of the roundabout combined with the uh, accessibility that a bike path would allow, and then somehow making cyclists feel safe within it. I don't suppose this is the best version of it, but I am working within what City Skylines has to offer. But it's still a lot of fun to think about and a lot of fun to do. A lot of people will probably say, why don't you just make an overpass? To which I say, no way, Jose, I will not make an overpass. Uh, I, I want pedestrians, cyclists, and vehicles to all coexist in one junction. Everyone, thank you so much for being here. I'm Yumble. Let's build a bike roundabout. For this circular bike adventure, we're going to end up using two special networks to make it happen. They are both biking roads with parking built in. Parking is a benefit because in real life, it acts as a safety buffer for cyclists. So we're going to start by making a four unit radius roundabout. Uh, so this is, of course, the curved road tool. We're going to take our road and we're going to go counterclockwise for our right hand traffic map. Four units by four units. You can make this bigger or smaller if you want, but I found that four units, oh, AKA 32 meters, is a really good radius for arterial roads. It just looks and feels right to me. So like I said, we've got this parking lane, which is gonna act as a nice buffer for our cyclists. And overall, it's a good looking network, not too much going on. Uh, these are both by, the two networks we're gonna be using mainly today are by Olex in the Steam Workshop. I'm gonna be linking these in the description but the arterial that we're gonna use is this kind of median road with trees that also has a parking lane and a bike lane, of course, as well as two lanes in each direction for traffic. So that's the basic setup. I've got one of these that I've already implemented in a more uh, specific to the map configuration, but if you're starting fresh, this is exactly how you'd set up a roundabout. To set up a roundabout functionally in City Skylines, it's not very difficult. You just go to Traffic Manager, it's a mod from the Steam Workshop, very popular one. Go to your priority signs, hold the shift button on your keyboard, control, and then click it. And that is literally it. It is functionally completely set up at present. Um, I do want to turn on the crosswalks, not visually, but functionally. So these settings, your roundabout settings, etc., any any settings that you use from Traffic Manager are all in your uh, the pause menu options, Traffic Manager. You can go to uh, let's see, probably policies. Yes, at junctions, on roads, roundabouts. I've checked everything off. What I really want to do is uncheck. Doo -doo 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 -doo. There's going to be one. Pedestrians shall not cross approaching the roundabout. I do want them to be allowed to cross. So I'm going to uncheck just that one button, reset the roundabout. Um, the, the, the thing that I did manually was just automatically done. But those are the settings that I'm using in Traffic Manager to make this happen, as well as shift control clicking to set up a roundabout. Now we're, get, we're going to go in with a different mod called Node Controller, and we are going to visually deactivate these crossings because we are going to make some nicer crossings later. I would also recommend extending these a little bit. Maybe we'll do like a lot. Maybe we'll do like 18, extend the entire th or uh, extend the offset to 18 meters. And then maybe we'll reduce the yellow one down to whatever looks good, like 12, 16 and 12. So I'm going to go around. I'm also I've turned on auto slope for these. So you can see I'm on kind of a raised um, hilly surface. If you let the node be sloped, the whole thing looks a little less awkward. So I'm going to go in and we're going to manually turn off the markings. This requires a separate mod called Remove Traffic Manager Markings. So if you have Node Controller uh, Revisited, I believe it's called Node Controller Revisited, the current version, you can turn off the markings if you have Remove, cross remove TMPE Crossings. Beautiful. So this is a perfect jumping off point for the whole thing. We've got a, a functional roundabout that's ready to go uh, with functional 
roads meeting it, and, and traffic manager is all set up. Now I'd like to dive in and make some intersection markings to really bring this thing to life and show how I, uh, the best way that I think you can make a bike roundabout in city skylines. Okay, here's the tricky part of the whole thing. We're gonna go to intersection marking tool and select our first junction. Now, once we've filled this one in with markings and fillers and everything, we can then copy it and paste it on all sides, but we've got to get this right initially. So I'm going to start by doing these. I'm just looking at where the bikes are going to go initially. I've already taken the time to move these into place. If you hold control, you can move each of these around and align them with the texture that's already on the, the network that we've chosen. So that's pretty cool. So be sure to hold control to move those into position. But first I'm focusing on the bike lanes. I know that those are gonna be a thing. I also know that we're gonna need lines on the exterior. Though we can't see them, we're gonna use that for fillers later. So that's important. Anything that doesn't seem to make sense will hopefully make more and more sense as we, <laughs> as we go. Um, I'm also gonna continue this protected lane. So this parking lane is going to become our curb. I'll show you that shortly as well. I also know that the right lane here is going to be forced to exit into either lane. So with that knowledge, I can force them to exit visually. Traffic manager is what's actually making it happen functionally in the game, but intersection marking tool is what gives us that visual cue. So, so the markings match up with the, um, with the reality of what the, what the simulated traffic is going to be doing. Once again, holding control to move those into place. Now, let's think about this. This lane is allowed to continue on, so that's fine. We'll leave this all open, but they can also change lanes here. So I'm going to allow them that space. Because of that, we'll end up with a bit of an asymmetrical shape here, big funny looking island, but that's okay. That's a good thing. Oh, you know what? I've forgotten our crosswalk. Here is one of my favorite newer features of intersection marking tool. If you've ever built markings before and forgotten the crosswalk, you know how painful that can be. Here's the best thing, the best new feature about it, I think. Hold shift to create your crosswalk. So I've clicked them both in, that's awesome. Now I'm going to go to additional, so top right corner of the intersection marking tool window, and we're gonna hit cut lines by all crosswalks. Watch this, boom. So the lines have all been cut which is so helpful. Before it used to destroy all the lines. New players, don't worry about it. People that have been using this for, for a year, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I know you do. You've done it, don't, don't deny it. Um, so now we have to actually cut all of these down to size and add any lines that I've forgotten. Eventually there's gonna be some dashed lines that happen too, but for now, let's just cut these down to size. So starting at the top, uh, I'm going to start trimming lines here. So we're down to the third one now. I'm just hovering to see what, we, what we're doing. And I'm gonna take that orange one and cut it down to that point by changing the from and to. If you've seen my intersection marking tool video, then you've seen exactly how this works in different situations. But that looks pretty good to me, moseying on down. So we're gonna cut this one as well, starting from that green from point. We're gonna move that down out of the way of the bikes. Very good. Ah, okay. So this one is kind of all over the place. I'm gonna take the orange side and we're gonna bring it all the way back across to here. And then we're gonna make that same cut, that same shape on this side. Beautiful. I'm holding shift to make a straight line. I don't, or a, a line as opposed to a dashed line, if you know what I'm saying, a solid line, so. If it looks like I'm not changing the style, I, I am by using the shift key. There's modifiers you can use for this. This one appears to be blocking the bike lane. So let's do something different with it. Let's take the lower crosswalk point and move it up to here. Oops. And then we'll re-add the lower part back because we are gonna want this as a bike buffer once again. So that's good. This one, I think we can actually leave that one whole. Maybe I'm wrong, but we will see in a moment. Now the red point we can bring back down to here. And then also add a rule here. 
ah, I've lost part of my bike lane. Where has it gone? So I'm going to hit add rule on the on the upper bike lane line and re-add that. Intersection marking tool is one of the most fun things, I think, but some of you may want to skip it if you're <laughs> if you don't feel like it. Really a lot of the the safety of this is visual in nature. So this is for us, not so much for the sims in the game. It's just for us to look at, marvel at, enjoy. So let's take this one down and then we'll re-add this line back. Now we're in the home stretch for solid lines. It'll be fillers and dotted or dashed lines in just a moment. So this one is in the way of the cars. So let's move that right dot back a little ways. Cool. And this one is clearly blocking traffic as well. So let's cut this one all the way back to here. We'll cut the right side here because that's blocking the bikes and we'll re-add all these more central ones as well. Add the rules. Cool. Have I forgotten anything? I'm, I'm sure that I have. And I'll remember it when it comes back to me. Oh, I want to add lines down here across the crosswalk. That's actually this node up at that, this line up at the top. This was added as just an empty line that defines the crosswalk, but we're going to add rule and just close these off because it, it'll look a little bit cleaner when we go to do fillers, I think. All right, solid lines are done. It's time for fillers. You can hold your alt button to get the fillers going. Have I lost my mind? There it is. Hold alt. Now let's start with this one. I know this is going to be a bit of a pavement island, so let's do all the pavement islands first. I have a mod called Curb Height Adjuster, and I've adjusted all my curb heights to 15 centimeters. This one is at the stock 30 centimeters, which is outrageously high when compared to a 15 centimeter curb. So we're gonna change the elevation using the scroll wheel. You could also type in these values. Uh, I'm gonna hold control to do a finer adjustment. Now we've got a 15 centimeter elevation and I'm gonna copy that for future reference because we're also gonna need it here. And I don't wanna make that adjustment every time. So now we can paste it in real easy and here. Paste it in, another one here. Nice. And on the ends here, we're also gonna want little pavement bits. Those will become more complete in the future. Now I'm actually gonna be doing the bike lanes in a few different phases and you'll see why. We want some of them to be solid and I want some of them to look like crosswalks, kind of a zebra, a zebra pattern of the, of that greenish bluish pigment that we're going to match shortly. So it's going to be a few different fillers actually. Starting here at the bottom, we're going to make a filler on the left side here. Oh goodness. Yep, I think that's exactly what we want. And let's try to get a good color match first, and the rest of this will go very, very smoothly. I'm going to turn this into solid, but we're going to change the color of this one to kind of a greenish, bluish color to match this. And we're going to turn the alpha channel way down so that you can see the, the pavement through it, just like you can on the, the actual markings there. I think it's pretty easy. Once you've got your alpha channel in the right place, just kind of triangulate visually lighter, darker, match it as close as we can. That's pretty good, but I think the alpha channel is still a little too high. I think, I think we just need to adjust this a little bit more. Right about there. That looks good to me. I may come back and adjust it later, but that gives us a really good starting point at least. And I'm going to copy that entire filler. So that, that will give us the solid style and the color and we can go to the other side and make the same change. I want the center to be solid also. Paste it in. Nice. Now I'm actually gonna copy the color that we've chosen, just the color. Eh, it doesn't matter, I'll, okay, I'll copy it, but now we're going to do the little crosswalks here. So the stripes can be angled, whatever it takes to get the angle right. Just kinda perpendicular to the to the whole situation. 
yeah, something like that. That's fine. And then we will paste in the color. And there it is. We'll do that one more time over here. Now let's do some dotted lines or some uh, dashed lines for the cars. I see two spots where we're going to want these dashed lines. One is here. And I'm actually going to use the existing dashed line from the network that we're using, from that texture. And we're going to try to match it. So I see that there's a bit of a, a wider space and the lines are a bit shorter. They look like they're similar in width, though not exactly the same. Let's, let's start with the width. If we get this right first, we can copy it to the other dashed line. Eh. 0 0.13, 0 0.12, somewhere in there is looking good. The dash length should be a little less. That looks good. And the space length should be a little more. A little more, even. Yeah, I don't see why not. Let's uh, make it slightly wider. So I'm going to 0.13. Dash length is looking very close, a little further. That looks about right to me. Space length is looking pretty good. Yeah, good enough is good enough. I'm going to copy that style, and then we're going to bring that vibe to this one. Now this one, I'm going to cut it. I don't actually want the dashes in the bike lane. I don't know how this is done in real life necessarily. In the real world, I'm no city planner, but... Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm actually just going to... I'm not even going to extend the dash all the, all the way to the end, actually. And we're going to paste the style so we have the same type of dash. This side, I, I could do this. Though I don't really see any benefit to that. I don't, I don't care to do that one. We'll skip it. That's good. Now that is everything for these junctions. Uh, for for this junction. This can be copied and pasted all around. And we'll go from there. Actually, let me show you how to copy and paste it. I didn't, I didn't even consider that I might have to. We're going to hit copy markings for the whole thing. For the whole darn thing. We're going to copy it. Looks good to me. And we're going to paste it. Let's start with the one that's directly across. Because that one might come out easier. I'm going to hit turn clockwise until it gets right. That is good. The reason I did the one directly across is because these angles will hold. Whereas this one here, I feel that we're going to have to redo those angles. Yep, so cool. It <laughs> Everything else is oriented well, but the angles are not so, not so good looking right now. So let's go to our fillers. You can see visually in the little bubble on the left there. And we're going to rotate this by about 90 degrees probably. Uh, yeah, turn that one to zero. And we'll turn the other one to probably also zero. Yeah, looking good. Now we can copy that new iteration. Paste it in. Rotate it. Check it off. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is good. This is very good. But you'll notice that our barricade, our, our curb here is incomplete. So let's do the curb. Uh, I'm going to make two lines here on this segment and we're going to align the ends so that they're awesome hopefully as close to centered on this as we can and I'm looking at the outer edge really we just want the outer edge to be about optimal because we are going to be putting that filler onto this one that same pavement filler that you can see on that corner very cool. So that looks good. Let's grab one of these one of these fillers. So go to filler, any of the pavement ones, they're all the same. Copy it. Go to the segment here. Filler. Hold alt. Let's make the filler. And paste it in. Awesome. Really, really good. Actually, that looks that looks very, very uh, clean. I think the alignment came out good. Uh, let's paste this whole thing in on all sides. So I'm going to copy, paste, probably have to rotate half of them. Nice. One thing that I forgot on this set of markings is actually the stop line. I'm going to throw in a stop line and we're going to change it to shark teeth, which represents yield in some places. And I might make an additional 
yield line over here for the bikes. The bikes don't really yield in this game, I don't suppose. But yeah, this implies that the bikes are supposed to yield here. They, they would actually yield back here if the game let them yield, but the game does not let them yield, so here we are. But I think that is pretty good for this junction. Let's do the roads leading up to this point and see if we can't change them up to make them a little more um, suitable for the roundabout. For the avenue network, I do like that there's parking on the sides generally, but here we're gonna do, kind of like in the roundabout, we're gonna convert it to a no park, okay. Well, I guess the roundabout settings already took care of it. So this, this is what a parkable segment looks like. This is what an already denied segment. Okay, that's good to know. So uh, if you saw my traffic manager settings earlier, that would be one of the functions of the roundabout settings. So cool, that's exactly what I wanted anyway. <laughs> Let's go to the segments in question. I'm going to Let's start by let's start by aligning these perhaps. Nah, that'll be easier once there's lines. Uh, I'm going to do a diagonal line across the way here and then a straight line up this way. Now that should allow me to align this a little better. Hmm. That's fine. And this one, I'm just gonna aim for the texture and just kind of try to cover it up. This one, I suppose, will align with the left side of the line uh, or the middle. It's all subject to change, really. Cool. I'm also gonna do another line here, which will give me a good way to, once again, holding control, you can move these into place. That one's already good. Cool. So I'm gonna do two separate fillers here. One of the fillers will be pavement, just like the, the piece next to it here, you'll see in a moment. So holding alt, make a filler. What we're gonna have here is really just tapering off pavement. That is the exact one, perfect. I still had it on the clipboard, we love that. So that is tapering off pavement to signify that parking time is over. You're done. Don't park next to the roundabout, you'd be weird. On the left side, we're going to do something similar-ish, but different. I want to do some angled angled bits here. So maybe like 45, yeah. Whatever's good, that's, yeah, 45 is fine. So this is just to further signify no parking here, is all I'm trying to say. I don't think I can add a line crossing this, so there's really no way to, to line that out. But that looks good to me. I did not get into this. I, I showed up for the city building and stayed for all the other cool stuff you can do in this in this darn game. That's great. So cars can park all along the way here, protecting the bike lane in the process. And then we have this nice curb within the roundabout. I'm going to call that good. Let me copy this to the other sides and we'll see how it looks. Well, I think that came out great. I'm very happy with it. I don't think that it is the safest roundabout on the planet by a long shot, but in terms of what's possible in city skylines without going totally nuts with, with uh, mods and things, I like how in my mind, this did not include me going nuts with mods. This was like a normal amount of mod usage, but you can probably do a safer IRL style roundabout, but you'd have to, you'd have to change things up quite a bit. Um, this is the, I think, the old style of Dutch roundabout, as it were. There's another one where the bikes cross right next to the pedestrians, just inside, and the bikes walk along with the pedestrians, as they kind of do here, and then the bikes yield. This setup would sort of rely on vehicles to yield to the bikes, which is not possible in city skylines. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to work within what is preferred in real life, weighed against what is possible in city skylines. And I think that this kind of hits the sweet spot. I do like having the bike lanes built into the network. I love having the parking lane, which you can convert into a curb. I think that is what makes this whole thing really great. So taking the curb and ending it, taking the parking lane and choosing to end it for a curb is what makes it work. And then you get this entire protected area where unless the car jumps the curb, the cyclists can feel safe as they traverse this thing with um, with islands to boot as well. Pedestrian islands, bike islands. Um, I, th I think that's about as good as it gets for city skylines. 
Everyone, let me know what you think about this one. Let me know if you've seen a better one in City Skylines. Feel free to put that in the Discord if you like. Um, definitely subscribe here if you like City Skylines content. I try to make two videos a week. Also, I stream twice a week on Twitch. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.